One man. One hundred guests. One thousand drinks. Drinking with Jason. <laughs> okay, you weirdos. Welcome to Drinking with Jason, episode number eight. This week, I am lucky enough to have Simon the Legend Whistler on the podcast. <laughs> you had to go with legend. I was like, <laughs> Jason says, what do you always introduce you as? And as I've already had a beer, I was like, oh, legend, professional party guest, whatever you like. And he was like, and then I was going to say my serious thing. And then he's like, no, legend's good. <laughs> legend is perfect. In fact, that's how I'm now going to refer to you. <laughs> Legend. I, well, I'm not going to object. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, it's not like I'm calling you douche or something. Yeah. What What would your regular title have been? Douche. <laughs> Is that on your uh, business cards? Well, I was. I talked about this on my podcast today, like how people at London Book Fair last year were like, um, "Yeah, so your podcast cat sounds cool. Can I have your card?" And I was like, "Have my what now?" <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I was like, "I must print up business cards by next year." So the London Book Fair is like next week, two weeks from now. I haven't done that. I definitely haven't done that. But yeah, that's what I, I, I once had business cards which said professional party guest because they were three pounds at the gas station and I was <laughs> a 19-year-old student and it seemed like a good idea because I've been playing too much of The Sims where, you know, the, the pinnacle of the lap slacker career was professional party guest or something. Yeah. Um, no, I guess podcaster, narrator, author, um, the usual stuff. I think uh, legend or douche definitely works better. All right, so my LinkedIn. <laughs> before we continue to bullshit, nobody has any idea who the hell we're talking to. Um, what are we drinking here today? Pilsner Rockwell. I live in Prague in the Czech Republic and this is the original Pilsner. I used to live on the street where they made this. Like It was the original Pilsner beer, which a bunch of beers around the world are based off, and I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's definitely top two, or maybe yeah, maybe it's my favorite, but it's the most famous, and I figured the most easily available for Jason. Well, <laughs> yours, yours definitely looks really different than mine. You weren't kidding. <clears throat> I'm in a can, because um, I never remember to return the bottles, and because you pay a deposit on the bottles, and I always end up with like 60 bottles, and then I end up just recycling them because I'm too lazy to take them to the store and get all the deposit money back. So I switch to cans. Plus, you can crush those like a real man. Yeah, and you can stand on them, and they support your weight, and then you can just tap them, and which has amused me since I was a child, and still does. <laughs> I'd actually like to see video of that sometime. <laughs> well, when we finish this first one, we can get it live <laughs> on air. <laughs> All right, I guess I should properly introduce you then instead of just legend. <laughs> Simon owns the Rocking Self-Publishing Podcast. You're an audiobook narrator. You're now an author. And what the hell else do you do? You run a, an author's forum. Yes. You say owns like what I do actually has value. I appreciate that. <laughs> he, you do a lot more than I do. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do a bunch of stuff. Um I may well, I guess like authors I talk to have this panic when they quit their jobs. They're like, shit, I should write all the time or I'm gonna like starve. I had the same thing. I like quit my I was freelancing, I quit freelancing, was like, I should do a ton of stuff, otherwise I'm gonna starve. And now I'm still doing a ton of stuff because, you know, half of the ton still worked, but I was still somehow left with a ton. So I do the podcast, I do um, I run this forum, I maintain a website badly. Um, I run a YouTube channel as well. I write books. I narrate books. I um, yeah, I do various things to keep the lights on and my beer shelf stocked. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like we have similar approaches except mine's with writing. I just try to write as much as I can and that, you know, if one book doesn't do shit and, and the other one does, it balances out. Yeah, this was exactly it. It's kind of just get cracking on a bunch of projects and worst case, diversified income. Oh, sorry. Best case, diversified income. Worst case, one thing works. Well, no, the worst case would be I just go hungry. But like bad case would be like one thing works and it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, worst case, I die. <laughs> sure, if we want to go that deep. Yeah, it's, it's good. <laughs> 
you originally now where are you, yeah <laughs> where are you from originally like what part um, I'm from Britain down south um, about an hour south of London there's a county called Kent to get more specific there are two large towns called Maidstone and Ashford I live in the countryside between the two I live I say I live I haven't lived there for 10 years but I grew up there <laughs> okay and, and um, we were just talking you live in the Czech Republic now yeah, I live in Prague now how did that happen? Kind of a long story. Um, after university, I was studying in London. I didn't really want to go and work in an office right away, so I decided to do some traveling. I went to Sri Lanka for a year. Um, I met my girlfriend, who is Czech there. We were working through the same company. And then, I, like, halfway through my time there, I was like, I could work for myself. You know, it's fairly cheap to live for. I think, you know, you'd struggle to spend $50 a day on an expensive day. I was like, I could make $50 a day. So I just kind of get onto Google and, well, I was kind of doing a bit of voice work already before then and kind of just ramped that up a little. And um, it's not too hard to make 50 bucks a day. And then um, kind of after that, you know, kind of grew things. And then my girlfriend was like, well, I live in Czech. And I was like, I could come to Czech. I could do that. And, uh, yeah, so I went there and um, here I am. Spent a bit of time in Mexico in between. Um, but now i settled in Prague for for a couple of years, or well, well, one year, and just starting the second year. Down in Mexico, wow, you're really going to all the, I don't want to say third world countries, but <laughs> not necessarily first. No, um, well, the I went to Sri Lanka originally because I definitely wanted to go to Asia. I'd done some traveling for like six months, um, just kind of bumming around backpacker style. Um, in between degrees, I did, I don't know why, for, for what reason there. And not any use to what I do now, <laughs> but I decided it was smart to do two of those. And um, in between them, I uh, did about I did a year of traveling. I spent two months in the U.S. actually, um, and then six months in Asia. I spent some time in the U.K. as well. And uh, yeah, um, and basically that led to one. T I, I really liked Asia. I really liked traveling around there. Um, really exciting. And then decided to kind of when I did this into it was kind of like an internship with the students organization, and they just presented me with all these options. I was like, ah, Sri Lanka sounds cool. I could go there. And literally a couple of weeks later, I'm on a flight and end up there. And then Mexico was because my girlfriend had a study abroad program there. So she was there for six months, and I went with her because that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, want to go to Mexico? Yeah, sounds fun. All right. Wow. I've never even been to Mexico. and I'm a little you bit closer. Right to next Mexico. door to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was in a. I, I, we lived in Mexico City, which, I mean, I've been to a bunch of U.S. cities, and it's it's pretty similar, like in the center, like big shopping malls, big streets, big cars, much more Mexican food. Um, but yeah, weird. <laughs> yeah, I would have rather lived like by the beach in Baja California or something, but uh, yeah, so it was okay. And it's kind of in the mountains, so it's not exactly warm Mexico. It's kind of just spring Mexico. But it was alright. I'm not rushing to go back to Mexico City, to be honest. <laughs> I've heard that it's fairly cheap to live in uh, Czech. Is that true? Like, I've heard of people moving there so that they could have internet-based jobs and not have to make a lot of money. Is that actually true? It's definitely cheaper than other places in this far west in Europe. Like, you've got Berlin, which is basically on the same thing. And Berlin's not expensive compared to somewhere like London. But compared to London, but it, Prague is still cheaper. And then compared to, I, I lived in London for a year, and it's just like you can't eat out. I was a student. You can't eat out. You can't do anything fun. You're just bleeding money. <laughs> and right. then in Prague, it's I mean it's not crazy cheap, but it's it's definitely much less expensive than somewhere like London or a big Western Europe city or Northern Europe in its entirety. <laughs> oh, okay. And then that allows you to do audio stuff for a living and get drunk yeah. on the internet with me. Exactly. It's like you don't want to work too hard, so living somewhere where life isn't so expensive. I mean, it's... I don't know if you've read that four-hour work week book by Tim Ferriss, but the idea of if you increase your income and decrease your expenses, life is just easier. And I think the easiest way to decrease your expenses is to live somewhere that's less expensive. Sure, absolutely. I... I kind of live by the same thing. I mean, I haven't moved to Czech Republic, but 
I the beer is really cheap. I mean, you'd like it. <laughs> okay, I'm on my way. How much a ticket is? <laughs> <laughs> More expensive than a beer. <laughs> I'll just sleep on your couch. I hope you won't mind. No, man. Can I go? How, how long? <laughs> Uh, well, we'll I'm moving back to your couch. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree with that. When I Actually, I think we talked about this when I did your podcast. I turned my life into a debt-free lifestyle so that I could do this. And then when you have down months, it doesn't matter because your bills are extremely low. Yeah. So, I think this is, especially when you're starting and it allows you to kind of take risks like... I was freelancing and, you know, I was making decent money. But if I wasn't living somewhere, like, that money was enough to live off for a way longer time. But if I moved to London, it would give me, like, two months to make something work on my own. Whereas if I was in, a, you know, in Prague, it's, it's maybe a year. Or if I, was in, um, if I was in Sri Lanka, it'd be, like, you know, a good decade. <laughs> You'd be retired. And it, it, well, yeah, you just, you just reduce the time before you have to go back and work for someone else which, you know, the more time you spend working for yourself, whether it's writing, whether it's podcasting, whatever you do, the more likely you are to make something work. Sure. So, and getting rid of debt, man, I mean, just, that's pretty crushing, I imagine, like, with uh, the payments and then the interest payments on top of payments, it's not much, not much good. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned working, going back and working for someone else again. I was just thinking about it the other day for some reason. It's been almost four years now since I've worked for someone, and I can't imagine doing it again. I'd probably be such a douchebag at work because I'd hate it so much. Yeah. I just can't imagine. I, I, I don't know. I never really had a serious job. I, um, like I said, I went traveling after this degree, and, yeah, I, I don't really know what it's like. I, I'm pretty much, like, I'm fairly sure I'd be okay. Like, I'm pretty happy in general. Like, if I was employed, I'd be like, oh, that's okay. I don't really mind, but um, no, now it's uh, now I wouldn't trade it. I, I'd Hell no. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, well, what's on Netflix today? I don't really feel like doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's... I love this. I still enjoy these, like, uh, the same way, like, these adult experience. I, I still feel like I go to the store and it's like, I can buy anything I want. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can buy as much chocolate or beer as I want. I'm an adult man. And it's the same, like, and just being self-employed in whatever capacity is just... It's that just that freedom on steroids. Like I can go to the store at three o'clock in the afternoon and buy beer and take it home and drink it. I can do whatever. Yes. I want. Three o'clock in the afternoon. What what are you waiting so long for? I don't know, man. I'm by three. I'm in eleven. I just wanted to be, you know. <laughs> oh, well, you didn't wake up till two. Less less judgy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should say, it's funny how you and I talked the first time. I had subscribed to your newsletter because of your podcast, the Rocking Self Publishing Podcast, which anyone who's interested in writing, or even if you're not just starting out, you got to have all kinds of great guests on with significant tips on mailing lists and anything to do with writing. Check out the Rock Self Publishing Podcast. But I had subscribed to your mailing list because I liked your show, and you were going to have El Casey on one week. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you sent out a newsletter saying, oh, I have New York Times bestselling author El Casey on. Is there any questions I should ask? Oh, yeah. And since I've co-authored a book with El <laughs> and spent half of my time shitting on El, I replied, yeah, ask. I don't even remember what the question was. I told you I don't remember what the question was. What was it? I don't remember. Why anything. are you such a douchebag? Is that what it was? <laughs> And I asked it of her. <laughs> Did you? See, I never actually got to listen to the episode. <laughs> ask this question. I'm not going to listen, uh, but but ask it. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, Did she answer? Yeah, but I don't remember the answer. It's um, it's probably some 80 episodes ago now. <laughs> oh, some douchey thing. It's L. Yeah. Yeah. So. You had uh, responded to that, and then, I don't remember how, but we ended up emailing back and forth several times, and somehow, out of nowhere, it turned into us arguing about the Back to the Future. Back to the Future, yeah. <laughs> wait, I mean, didn't we agree in the... Wait, did we agree in the be on the best one and then not agree on the order of the other two, or did we disagree on the best one? We disagreed on the best one, which the I almost yeah. didn't want to ask you to be on Holy here because... No, not two. Okay. We, we might as well just get this out of the way. You think one? <laughs> one, by far. It's not even close. And I love to agree on three because of two, two, one, three in my books. 
Wait, you like three better than one? Oh, no. Two, one, three. Two, oh, oh, oh. One, one, three. Okay, I was going to reach through the screen. <laughs> okay. No so two, is it because of the gadgetry and the interesting futuristic stuff? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that is pretty yeah. cool shit. I mean, one has the... the one, I, I think the one is the better time travel plot line, but two, they go to the future. That's what I wanted. You know, 1950s, fantastic. 2015, shit, I wonder what it's going to be like then. Uh, oh, you know what? I should go back and watch <laughs> that and see what... Why isn't the date coming up soon? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it this week? I think we might have just no, passed it. it. We can't pass it. No, I'm getting on Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't remember seeing any 3D Jaws display that comes out and bites you. <clears throat> don't worry, man. We've got a few months. October the 21st. October the 21st. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to do a marathon on that day. Yeah, well, there's got to be some cool parties on October the 21st. There's got to be Back to the Future, future parties where people wear, like, the auto lace-up Nikes and uh, inflatable jackets. Hmm. You know what? If I can't find one, I'll just throw one myself because I have to dress up like Marty McFly or something. Yeah, I want to wear that, that shiny jacket that changes color and <laughs> inflates itself. Oh, man. See, I haven't watched that movie in so long. I have to go back and do it. I've seen it so many times I could recite the lines. See, that's how I am with the first one. I've watched it constantly. So why the first one over the second one? Just the better time travel storyline? Uh, I actually think the first one's one of the best movies ever made. Just the story is incredible. Every... Every line of dialogue in the first third of it comes into play later in the movie. So he sees a truck that he loves, and then later on the truck's in it. They mention, uh, yeah. mention lightning strike at the beginning, which just sounds like a throwaway line in any other movie, but in Back to the Future it ends up being a major plot line. All his family stuff, so-and-so's in jail, uh, the sister, I don't remember what was going on, but all that stuff plays a part later in the movie. Just the writing... I don't know, maybe it's because I'm an author, but the writing in it is just unbelievable. Yeah, i gotta, I got to watch it again. I, I, watch the, I watch the second one too often and don't um, watch the, the first one enough. I have some great memorabilia of it, but I don't have it in this room. Do my, you really? Yeah, my wife got me the license plate from the DeLorean. And I out of time. Out, out of time. time. Yeah, I'm not going to believe really this. I, uh, I uh, have this license plate. Oh, you do too? Uh, well, I, I say I have it. It's somewhere in storage. I had it as a kid. I went to um, is it Universal Studios where this was? I guess it must have been. And they had it in the they had the Back to the Future ride in Universal Studios. And in the gift shop, you could buy the out of out of, out of time or whatever it was DeLorean license plate. And so I purchased one. Yeah. You could just buy that in the gift. Damn, I thought this was so unique. <laughs> Damn. No, you can get it in the gift shop Universal Studios. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, and the other thing. Dude, that... I, uh, I don't think many people have this. I think it's still very cool. I, I was so happy with it, and now I'm really bummed out. She also got me some film stills, uh, actual frames. From the are, real? Yeah. Reels? Yeah, it's really cool. So. Yeah, I didn't have any of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was pretty happy with that. Uh, but anyway, that ended up leading to I was on your show, and... I read the license plate. <laughs> <laughs> no, just uh, we, were, we were on the Back to the Future forums, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess I should step it back a little bit. <laughs> After the Back to the Future argument, that led to me being on the Rocking Self Publishing podcast, which was I don't know, a year and a half or two years ago now, a while ago. It's a it's a, it's a year and a half since I started the show. I got shit. It's over a year and a half. Yeah, you were an early guest as well. How many episodes are you up to? 90, 93. Okay, so yeah, you're actually approaching two years then. Uh, yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. Uh, I want to say I was in maybe in the 20s, something like that. I don't know. But it feels about right. 20 or 30s, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I actually did not remember anything I said on that because I was so sick. I had the flu. And... Oh, really? I had almost I was almost going to cancel with you, but it was last minute and I didn't want to do that. And yeah, I went back and somebody was telling me about stuff I said on it and they'd like the advice and I couldn't remember a goddamn thing I told you. So I went back and listened to it. Nope, don't remember it. <laughs> wow, okay, yeah. Episode 19, by the way. 
Wow, I didn't realize it was that early on. It's early on. Wow. A few well, episodes up to El Casey, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> how, I wanted to ask, because you weren't an author before, how did you end up doing an author-based podcast? I was a narrator for authors, so I was narrating the audiobooks for people, and I thought, I should talk to these. I, honestly, I listened to like 20 podcasts, and then I was like, I was going to start a podcast either way, and I was like, what should I start a podcast on? And then it kind of tangentially related to what I was doing in like freelancing wars. So I was like, I could do a podcast interview with authors. These people seem quite interesting. And... Yeah, so um, I think it was basically I got on keyboards and was like, hey, I'm starting an author show. I'm not an author. Come talk to me. And because keyboards is pretty friendly and nice, they were like, okay. And then the next thing I know, it's two years later, and I've done 90 shows and somehow become an author myself. And That's yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah, it was... I mean, I, I I wanted to start a podcast. It wasn't. I wasn't particularly in the self-publishing world, and it was just... I was doing that, you know had a tangential relationship to self-publishing, so I was like, I could do this. Did you look at the market? Because it wasn't, at the time, there wasn't a whole ton of self-publishing podcasts. I was listening to Joanna Penn's podcast, because I think, you know, I was working in the kind of narration sphere, and from hers, I think I listened to SPP occasionally, but I was regular listener to jo Joanna Penn's Creative Pen podcast, and kind of like realized there was probably a room for kind of these long-form interviews that was not really done by... I think she was doing less of those, or... I don't even remember. It was something like, oh, there's space for just chit-chat, or um, kind of the, the more long-form style. I like, I like the old-school radio interviews and stuff, so I think that was part of my inspiration. Oh, so you weren't actually looking at the market thinking, wow, there's barely anything here. You just decided... I'm no, no, no I'm, not a, I'm not a particularly, like... I, I work in business, but I've never been particularly good at market research or marketing or, like, this whole SEO thing. I've, I have no idea why RSP actually is successful because I do no marketing. I'm just like, I started a Twitter account that I go on occasionally, and I'm like, hey, I have a new episode, and I reply to people who tweet at me, but I, I don't know about it. I, I, I did a bit of SEO, and then I got bored, and it was just too much work, and... It, I, I suppose I should, then maybe my audience would be bigger, but I don't know, it, it seems to work. Just I don't do any of that shit. Sure. I don't want to do that shit. Yeah, one of the things when I quit my last job, I, I told myself I wasn't going to do things I didn't like anymore, so that stuff bores the hell out of me, so fuck it, not doing right. it. Right, I, I want to talk to people who are up to interesting stuff and then have people listen to that. And exactly. Yeah, if I have to, like you know, squeeze blood from a stone to get people to listen to it, then I'm probably doing something wrong with the material rather than the marketing. Oh, yeah, that's true. It like, is interesting. It's just word of mouth. And I think that's with books as well, like in a way. I mean, yeah, there's certain basic marketing things you should do, but don't, you know, it doesn't seem to... There's, there's overkill and there's, like you say, if it's it can be really boring. Yeah, it totally sucks. I don't even... <laughs> So you started this author forum, uh, Writer Circle, which I'm a part of, and there's really interesting conversations on there, and a lot of the guys have been talking about Facebook marketing, and I just, I'd like to try it, but it's so tedious and boring to me, I'd rather just do anything else. <laughs> yeah, I also, but I, there's another thing I like learning something. Like, I guess, so if there's, like, something I'm interested in, it's, like, and there's a course available or a book available, I'll go study the shit out of it. And just because I like the kind of expansion of the knowledge, but then if if the actual, like, SEO, it's kind of like, oh, it's interesting to learn how it works. But then the fact that I would have to go through, like, 90 posts and insert keywords and insert better titles and insert, like, I don't even know what else I read about. But I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and exactly. It was like, it's fun to learn. Like, it's, it's great to know that's how it works, but I'm not going to do that 90 times. <laughs> yeah, I, I read all this stuff, and I try to learn it all, and then I just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Instead of 2 in the afternoon, I'm drinking Pilsner. Is it Urkel? Urquell. Urquell. Which is, weirdly enough, a German name for the beer, which they market it as internationally. Here it's called, um, they just call it Pilsen, which is the name of the town it comes from. Oh. Yeah. All right, then. This might be my first Czech beer, actually. 
Well, know. if you've drunk Pilsen, it's uh, the Pils Pilsner beer. You know, like all of the the light, basic, you know, the standard beer is a Pilsner beer. And this is where it comes from. This is the original one. I did not know that. Yeah. Hmm. See, I just drink it. I don't actually know about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I try not to think about it too much. Either, but <laughs> just I, went, I, went to, I went to the brewery and I was told all this stuff. So <laughs> 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 they promised free beer and I had to learn a little before I got my free beer. So I was like, I can tolerate that. Yeah, That's you just keep it. talking. I'll drink. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> I went to the I went to the Heineken brewery in Amsterdam, and very cool. They they are they are really amazing at this. You have to go through like this hour long tour, and I swear they turn the heating up in the Heineken brewery to like thirty degrees. So by the end of it, you're super thirsty, and you've just been learning about beer, and you're like this this beer, and they like they they give it to you, and, you're, and they're like just look at the bubbles raising. And all I'm thinking is, I want to drink it, 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 I want to drink it. And I taste it, and it's fantastic. And ever since that day, I've thought Heineken is amazing. I never really liked it. I was like, Heineken, fairly middle of the road, average beer. If there's nothing more interesting on tap, I'll drink it. But ever since that time, I'm like, Heineken is the ultimate thirst quenching beer. Huh. So Heineken has done its marketing. They, they're a pro, <laughs> yeah. They've, they've and they charge 20 beer. euros to go through the brewery museum as well, so... um. They've got it down. <laughs> That's pretty they slick. They charge you to turn you into a fan. <laughs> Damn it's, <that>. like, <laughs> it's like you're paying to join someone's mailing list. Yeah, i got to figure that out. That's That almost sounds like a scam. Damn it. It is. I Now I buy Heineken, and I paid for the privilege of getting into Heineken. <laughs> it's really ridiculous. <laughs> That's, that is insane. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask too. You said you were into audio before you did the podcast. How so? What were you doing? I was. Um, it was actually kind of the first thing I ever did working for myself, which was narrating books for authors. So um, it was back in the day. Um, I was working. I was a student, and I was kind of not really wanting to work in a bar or whatever students do. And so I just Googled, "How do I make money with my voice?" And you know, as you do, <laughs> what all professionals thing. do. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> I want to treat this really seriously. <laughs> Hello, Google. <laughs> Hello, 2004 Google. <laughs> yeah, so I, I Googled that, and I found a couple of places where they like basically accept randomly uploaded tapes of you reading stuff. So uh, I did that. One guy took me on, and he was like, here's a book. He'd send it to me by post, because this was back in the day. Um, I would read the book and I'd go through the pages and I would send it back to him and get paid. And I did that a few times and then I kind of got into, basically I would just write, I would go through Amazon and I'd find books that were self-published and I'd record like two minutes of narration and I'd be like, hey, want to make a book together? We'll split the royalties. And that was okay and that was a few for a while and then obviously ACX came along and made that awesome easy and yeah, here we are. That was how I kind of got involved in the author world. How many audiobooks do you have under your belt now? 20 plus, maybe 23, 24. Not really sure. Wow. Yeah, well, it's been over a few years. Sure. Uh, how long does it usually take you to do one? Like, what's your work per finished hour? About rate? three to one these days. Three to one these days. Um, but back in the day, like nine to one. <laughs> Whoo! It takes me, like, at first, because you're, like, you're screwing up all the time, and then you have to edit it yourself. Now I have an editor who will splice everything together and, you know, correct all my mistakes. And I still master it myself because I think, you know, I'm just better at that. And yeah, um, now it's now it's much less, but it um, you, you the more you do, the better you get at it. The quicker it becomes. Sure. How often do you take them on? Because of all this other stuff you're doing, do you are you pretty choosy nowadays? Uh, kind of now. I just work with friends or people who have done books before. It's not, um, you know, it's a good earner, but it's not a, it's not a huge earner. I've um, started a few other things that do a bit better. And yeah, like, and also kind of, it's, it's, it's repetitive. And I think what I like about working for myself is I can kind of try new things all the time. And like, it, it doesn't really pay directly, but I much rather interview people and making podcasts than I do recording books. It's just more fun. And sure. yeah, but I mean, then like I did write, publish, repeat. I did let's get 
digital, uh, the, the SPP guys and David Gochran, and you know, those are popular books, so those do well, and they're kind of in my niche, so I've got an audience who are interested in that as well, and those kind of make sense to me. Which is, okay, gotcha. So you're not doing too much fiction nowadays? No, fiction's also way harder. Um, it's, I've, I've done a few fiction books, and yeah, it, it, it's good fun, but I mean, You'll screw up the voices and screw up the accents, so you have to go in and splice them in later, and that's definitely not a three to one. <laughs> sure. But still, um, I'm, I'm sure there are pros who do like two to one or three to one, where it's like switching between um, six different accents, but I just can't do that. I will be like, there was one book I had to do where it was like switching between an Irish guy and a South American woman, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to record all the South American women dialogue. Oh, I think I heard that. Was that on a different yeah. podcast they were talking about that? Was that a horror writer's podcast, yeah. Was that it? Oh, that was yeah, yeah. hilarious. And I had to go through it. I would do all of the stuff later. <laughs> like, I spliced in every single line from the, the South American. I did all the Irish, like, as it went. And then I just did British regular, my regular voice, and I was just accepting that I had to go in and do all of these lines again later. <laughs> Oh, man. It was a massive pain in the ass, but, yeah, um, got a better result. Still, you know, I'm not a brilliant South American woman. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the, the ongoing joke on that podcast was, I'm not a brilliant South American woman from the turn of the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've ever heard that. It, that shit was really funny. It's um, a shame they stopped that podcast. That was, uh, that was good. Yeah, that was right in my wheelhouse, too. I just discovered it something like a week after they shut it down. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> we'll listen to more of that, but it's all right. Now, actually, I was thinking about asking Jay Thorne to be on here. He seems like a fun guy. So Jay Thorne is a fun guy. You should definitely have him on. Super easy to talk to as well. Well, I just saw him. He did an old one on Joanna's podcast, and he had said he's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which I'm from right outside of there, so... Might have to do it in uh, person or something. Person, yeah. yeah. Well, when people say like right outside of in the U.S., I kind of imagine like a three-hour drive. <laughs> it's still like I'm right outside of that six yeah. hours away. <laughs> Actually, I grew up about an hour. I'm not outside of it anymore. I moved, but I grew up about an hour and a half outside of it. But that was the only city within four hours. Otherwise, so yeah. like I grew up in the middle of nowhere. So I always tell people I'm outside of Pittsburgh, but it really wasn't that close. But I, people always ask me, where are you from? And I was like, well, not really London, but still, I'm in, you know, definitely not London, like far away from London in my mind. But still, you know, you hop on a train, you're there in 50 minutes. <laughs> For, like, because England's really small. <laughs> sure, I gotcha. But it's like, yeah, just outside of San Francisco. Three hours drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... It's, sometimes you never, you don't realize how different it is for people, but you've traveled significantly more than I have, so you probably have a better grasp on it than I do. So Yeah. I, I, I did the uh, actually the east to west in the US, which is really far. Which is really, really far. I went from um, New York to Los Angeles. And it was, uh, you drove? I combination of driving and buses. Holy shit, that's far. <laughs> Dude, I, I think it's is it it's like there's this really mountainous area. Um, or like there seem to be mountains all around you, but there's this road that runs through it. And I was on a bus for like two days, and I went to sleep at night, and I'd wake up like many hours later, and it'd be exactly the same. Like I was like, shit, this country is really big. Well, you um, there's two mountain ranges. That I, there might be more. But there's two main ones: the Appalachians, which is where I live, and then there's the Rockies. I've hiked in the I've hiked in the Appalachians. I did some of that Appalachian Trail for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Did you like it? Um, I, I've done yeah. that too. It was a serious adventure. I got bitten by a snake, which was pretty hardcore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How? I was I was hiking along, and there was, was this big old stick. No, I was just hiking along. There was this big old pain in my leg, and I thought I'd trodden like or got stung by like a, like if someone told me like you can step in like a beehive in the ground, and so I was like, shit, I've trodden on a beehive, <laughs> and so I just leg it, absolutely leg it. And then I looked down at my leg, and there's these two little tiny puncture wounds, like the little things. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And then this, like, red starts spreading. And I'm like, what the fuck? 
it's, it's been like three days of hiking since I've seen anybody. There's nothing around. It's like the Appalachian Trail. It's like no one. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm pretty screwed. So I just sit there, and it's like, oh, it gets a bit swollen and a bit red. And then it just stops, and I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to be cool. Oh. <laughs> that was yeah. That was... So that's my most hardcore story. <laughs> now it's, it's going to be downhill from here. <laughs> that was the extent of your medical <laughs> attention for a. Snake what are you going to do? There was like nothing there. There's no mobile reception. There's nothing. You just. <laughs> Were you by yourself? Yep. <laughs> oh. My God! Holy I've been, like, shit! Hiking for th- I didn't see no one. I've been like hiking for three days, and I've seen like a c- couple of people. And I just was sleeping in those. Either just I had a hammock, so I'd string it up between two trees, or I'd sleep in one of those um, a frames. Yeah, yeah, the shelters that they have out there, and I'd just be sleeping in there alone every night. It was pretty scary. Um, yeah. I yeah. Would, I <laughs> <laughs> so it started getting really red and stopped, and you were like, eh, it's fine. Well, it was like, so I um, eventually, like, I hike for, like, a few hours more, and I finally get some phone reception, and I call my uh, my aunt lives in Atlanta, which is kind of where I jumped on the trail from. I was like, so what's this about? And she was like, well, if it's not done anything to you by now, you're probably fine. <laughs> so like, okay, cool. dead. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well... You know, it's, it's been a few hours. It's been like six hours or something. So if it hasn't done anything now, you're probably cool. <laughs> wow, wow! Yeah. You didn't see the snake at all? No, not at all. I just I, I thought it was bees, and I legged it because I was like, the the person that like the the person at the start of the trail was like, yeah, there's the you don't want to train in the beehives. Was it, there was somewhere I read about beehives. This was years ago. I'm blurring the memories, but. Um, also, it's a story I've told many times, <laughs> so I'm sure it gets more exciting every time I tell it. You know, like these things tend sure. to. But um, no, it was it was pretty scary. It was pretty scary. But. Yeah, I would shit my pants if a snake bit me, and I never saw what it was. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Um, Damn. Yeah. See, I grew up in the woods. I never was bit by a snake, and you're, <laughs> you're walking and it nails you. Yeah. Um, not not the best experience, but good story. <laughs> So how many days were you hiking on the Appalachian Trail? Two weeks. Two weeks. I think 13 days. Holy shit. How far up did you get? Do you know? I don't know. There was um, there was a place where you could jump off, and I'd kind of... I planned to do it for a month. And, yeah, I was really lonely and sad. So <laughs> it gets <laughs> shitty after, like, two days. Yeah, man. I was like, this is great. And I kept, like, a journal. And I'm like, this is great. And then basically after like three days, my journal journal just turned into how lonely I was. And then I met some guy, and I was so happy. And we drank Jack Daniels out of like a flask, and I was just writing how happy I was to meet this guy. And I was like, this is the best experience ever. I'm so happy, and now I have to leave, and I'm lonely and sad again. I felt like such a pussy, though, like to come off after like two weeks wanting to go for like a month. But... No, I think I did it. I was I was younger, but I think I only did it for two or three days, and I was just... Fuck this, I'm done. You were by yourself as well? No, I I was with I was with my grandparents actually. Um but they weren't they weren't like in their seventies at this point, so they could they were moving at a pretty good clip, but even at that it was you know, I like being out in the woods, but being out in the woods twenty four seven that shit gets old. Yeah, um, yeah, it got old. I, th- I think, like, I tolerate it much better, like, when you're with someone else, you can kind of laugh about things. Like, ha, 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 ha snake bite, ha, 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 ha. When you're by yourself, you're like, oh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> right. am I going to die? Die. <laughs> and, like, you'd be like, oh, yeah, maybe the bears will come. Ha, 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 ha. But when you're by yourself, all you think about is goddamn bears. <laughs> I actually saw a bear. Uh, out by myself once. I wasn't on the Appalachian Trail, but I was out in the middle of the woods and I saw a bear, and it was not far away. Uh, <laughs> it's not cool, right? I, I've never, I didn't see one. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's a black bear, so it's not some giant monster, but it was enough that um, I might have run and cried like a girl. <laughs> but the... I, I might have run and cried. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was it was a scary experience. This is a safe place. So you were in the states for how long? If you were on the trail for that long, two months. I did. Um, I traveled with uh, a good friend of mine from high school and university, and 
we went for like a month. We did the Greyhound buses around, um, basically did New York to LA and then across to Atlanta. Um, so I basically did it there and kind of most of the way back. And yeah, he was with me for the first month and we were just kind of traveling around. Like we'd never been, we were 21. So it was like um, we basically planned, yeah, when we're 21, we should go to the US because then we can drink because we've been able to do it for three years in the UK. <laughs> so it's like, Right. And also renting a car becomes possible when you're 21 without paying the enormous surcharges. So, um, um, yeah, and, and we did that, and it was it was a blast. Like, it was a, a great deal of fun. And um, I took, like, this little 15-liter backpack, and he took, like, a, a small one as well. So basically it was, like, go to Walmart, buy new clothes, um, change in the bathroom, and just kind of... It was a, it was a good adventure. And then another month, um, I had family in Georgia, so I went to see them. And yeah, then did a couple of weeks of, or I did like a week with them, a couple of weeks of hiking, then I did, I guess it must have been slightly over two months, and then some time in Miami and New York on the way home. Damn, you've seen more of the United States than I have. 23 states. 23 states. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. But that includes kind of, I was in Chicago on a bus, it counts. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. So you got to see all kinds of different climates. I mean, you go from the Rockies to the desert on the way to LA. All sorts, man. Like, all sorts of climates, all sorts of people, like, everything. It was awesome. Like, Yeah, that's that's one thing um, I try to explain to some people I know, um, particularly from Australian stuff. They always talk about how Americans are like this and Americans are like that, and I try to explain people on the West Coast and people on the East Coast it's an entirely different world. Like, yeah. Entirely different world. I can't relate to certain kinds of people because it's just a different... It's like being from a different country almost. Yeah. The cultures are way different. I mean, you can pick up on this just traveling the country. Sure. So I'm from the Northeast, so I want shit done now. I want things to move quickly. Um, and when I go to the South, things are very slow. And I yeah. just look around... Fuckers, hurry up! Bring my dinner, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's like the the the. Just also, I have um, family from the northeast, I guess, where you are, like from New York, and then mm -hmm. that sort of area, and then also from California. And it's like their their politics, their thinking is like opposite ends of the spectrum. It's, yes, exactly. It's really, quite. Oh, well, every country has different politics, but just the whole, the the way they speak as well. It's just. You know, it's, it's, it's a huge country. Yeah, it's, it's very different. When I went to college, because I grew up in the mountains, I went to college and I would talk, and I had this accent that's very specific to the region I'm from, and people would look at me as I'm talking and just say, what what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> and and I'd say these... What's that? You still have the accent now. No, I, I had to get rid of it because I, I worked really hard in college because people just had no idea what I was saying. Wow. Um, I shouldn't say accent. That's that's not right. But my vocabulary was very different. Yeah. yeah. The vocabulary. Yeah. Um, some of the people, like my my wife's parents, actually have a very thick accent. Um, and Same and the vocabulary. So, just weird things like um, milk instead of milk. They say milk. So, M A L K. Yes. But if you've never heard that, what the fuck is a Malk? What are you What are you talking about? Isn't that thing they send through the Stargate on us on Stargate SQ? <laughs> yeah. It's like we've got to send the Malk through to make sure it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I didn't mean to delve into uh, United States culture or anything, but it was just interesting. I didn't know you you'd done that much traveling. That's a lot. It was It was a pretty intense two months. Yeah, I uh, spent a lot of time sleeping on buses. And then Mexico and Sri Lanka. I mean, holy shit, man. Yeah, man. I've done like 40-something uh, countries. Wow. So traveling is obviously something you just like to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm into travel. I'm into... I'm a big food person, so I love checking out. Like, I'll just be like, yeah, you could go up the Empire State Building, but I hear there's this great restaurant across the street. So I'm like, let's check it out. Oh, I'm the same way. Every time I do travel and they want me to go see these tourist attractions, I'm like, yeah, I'd like to have like, a local wait, restaurant. Wait, with bar. different beers, right? Like, yeah, exactly. It's like I want to taste what they make here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd rather see the culture than see what they present as their culture. You know what I mean? 
absolutely. I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I live in Prague. I still haven't seen half of the tourist stuff here, and I probably won't. Yeah. I was, when I was in London, it was the same thing. Sure. I actually live maybe an hour and ten minutes outside of Washington, D.C. I think I've been there twice. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. I went, I saw the museums. Okay, that's enough. I, this did is you take a White House tour? I did not do that, no. Um, I just did... Saw... Hmm? I, I recently saw White House Down. This, uh-huh. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've it's, seen it. It's exactly what you wanted. I, I don't know. I was like, I saw this got 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm like, what are you people talking about? This is exactly what you expect. Like, if you got this movie, and like the critics go, it was a bit shallow. I'm like, what did you expect? It's called White House Down. <laughs> There was two of them that came out around that time. One, yeah, that's the Olympus one with Jamie Foxx, right? Yes, and there's Olympus Has Fallen as well, which I saw and was slightly disappointed by. The White House Down delivers. Olympus Has Fallen. Is that the one with Gerard Butler? I think so. I saw that one in the cinema, and then I saw White House. Because White House Down was kind of like the less popular of the two, and I recently saw that on this Netflix or something, and it was just so good. <laughs> it was just so good. I haven't seen that one in a while. Um, or do you still travel quite a bit? Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that tangent. Um, less. Yeah, whatever. Um, We're drinking. That's what we do. <laughs> drinking with Jason. Is this podcast actually called Drinking with Jason? Yes. I like that. Um, I travel less than I used to. I'm, I kind of got into the slow travel, kind of stay somewhere for a, for a while, kind of settle down here in Prague for a bit. Um, I like Europe. I definitely like especially during the spring and summer. It's really nice, and you can hop on a flight or a train to anywhere really quickly. My family's obviously in the UK and friends I grew up with, so it's nice to be able to hop back there a few times a year without spending, you know, a thousand dollars a flight or whatever. And, yeah, long term, I, I would like to travel more in the winter, like go somewhere warm for November, December, January, February, because I don't really like the cold. <laughs> sure. It's yeah. a little harder when you're working for yourself because you don't get paid vacation. If you're not working, you know, things could slide. Oh, I would completely disagree. Really? I would say it's like, because I work for myself, it's like I close that laptop lid, I jump on a flight, and it's like my work is in my bag. I'm not saying, I would. I mean, I would go somewhere for four months where it's raw, warm, but I would still set up a desk there and work my hours. Oh, see, when I do, I, I don't do any work <laughs> at all. Ah. When I Not, take a vacation, I just sit on a beach somewhere and drink. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, I would I would do the longer but work. It would be like I take my work with me and just to be warm. So you're talking like relocating for a couple months at a time. Oh yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's a little different. S- since I started writing, we haven't really taken a real vacation just because you know if I take a week off, I don't get paid for that week. You know, unlike everyone else there with us, so. Yeah, what about going somewhere like in the winter for a month and take your laptop? Uh, possible. We're actually looking. We like the winter though, so. Oh, um, or whichever season you don't like. I like all the seasons. What I really do. do. There's I'm, no I'm need for it. I'm the one person <laughs> who doesn't usually complain about the weather. I ah. I enjoy the season changes and everything. So. Yeah, I um. Not a not a winter fan. I like skiing, but that's about it. <laughs> Do you get a lot of snow there? It was snowing today, depressingly. Um, oh, it was like yeah. it was spring last week, and now it's snowing. Um, yeah, it snows a bunch. It snows a bunch. Uh, hmm. I just uh, L Casey's been on my ass to go over there and visit her in France, and I think I'm gonna have to do it soon. Although I'm not sure if either yeah. or <laughs> either of us will survive. Uh, <laughs> I'm meeting Al Casey um, at the London Book Fair. Oh, you are going to meet her? Yeah, we got in touch by email, so I'm seeing her like on you know, a Tuesday or something. Kick her ass for me. <laughs> of course. Well, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> hey, douchebag from Jason Pratt. <laughs> Actually, if you would tell her that, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Well, I did in the interview, so... <laughs> <laughs> she's, a, she's a character. Cool. It's, I'm looking forward to it, yeah. I didn't. Uh, I don't think I knew you were going there. I I saw the thread on the writers forum, but I, I hadn't really been paying attention to it because I'm not going. Yeah. Um, you gonna meet up with a ton of people there? 
Yeah, probably. I think I put it out on the podcast today, and I was like, "Hey, drop me an email if you want to meet up at the London Book Fair." So I'll probably uh, say hey to some people. It was fun last year. I went last year as well and met up with a few folks, and yeah, it was good fun. So. Because of the popularity of your podcast, do you find that a lot of people know who you are, and you don't? You had no idea. Like you've never talked to them. Yeah, I mean, it's a one-to-many thing. But if people talk to me, I'll talk back. <laughs> it's like. I, I mean, I listen to a bunch of podcasts, and I'm well aware of, like, these people have no idea who I am. And then now, kind of randomly, I also have this popular show, so I'm pretty much assume there's a bunch of people who listen to my show who never reach out, but I love talking to the people who do. So. so if you go to a place like this, do you have a lot of people come up to you? Well, they don't know what I look like, generally. So I had, I had one guy hear my voice and come over to me. <laughs> but um, Really? Uh, yeah, but... Mostly, you know, it's it's radio. Like if you, I don't know any American radio presenters, but like if I had a British radio presenter, I no, I had no idea what they looked like. But if they spoke, I'd know what they sound. Sure, sure. Have you ever thought about doing video with the the podcast, or you just prefer audio? I prefer. Well, I've thought about doing some video stuff in general, just because I kind of I I got comfortable in front of the microphone. I'm still not really comfortable in front of video. Like now with it with the Google Hangout, it's different because I'm looking at you. But like when you're like, there's just a camera, and you're like, hey, what's up? This is Simon. Yeah, from it's Amazon very publishing. And I always look super shifty. Like if I was making a video, no one would trust me. Because <laughs> like I, I'm looking at the camera now, and it'd always be like, hey, welcome to uh, Rock and Self Publishing. Uh, and I'm always looking all over the place, like I've got something to hide. But it's just because looking straight into a camera is really weird. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Even when I do the intro to this, that's pretty much the only time I look at the camera. And as soon as I do, I have this weird moment where I just—it's weird. I don't—I don't even know how to describe it. But yeah, I'm not—I'm yeah. not super comfortable with that yet. But yeah, I was just curious because YouTube is such a big thing now. Um, yeah, I—I I, I run a, a completely separate project. I run a YouTube channel. I think I was talking about it in the form of it, and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 huge, but I think to do the video with the talking heads, I mean, I look at SPP and self-publishing roundtable and stuff like this, and it's like clearly they are driving, you know, and they do the, the video every week, and it's, you can just, you can see the numbers on YouTube, and you can estimate the numbers they get on iTunes, and it's like this is, it's, it's a drop in the ocean for, for those guys at least. Oh, really? Well, it's like hundreds of views on YouTube, maybe, but thousands for sure on iTunes. Uh, see, I haven't got this on iTunes yet. My first, I think, three, there was a really bad echo. The El Casey one was echoing like crazy. Um, so I was trying to get a couple more down, but I think it's starting to sound good, so I should get it up there at some point. Yeah, what mic are you using? Uh, God, I don't even remember. I got it on <laughs> Amazon for like 40 bucks. It sounds nice. It's you're getting a good sound. What was causing the echo? Uh, it was other people. They didn't have earbuds in, and I was hearing <clears throat> reverb. So yeah. it sounds. just. But I couldn't hear it when we were doing when we were talking. It was only when I went went back in and started editing it. Uh, it sounded like complete shit. So oh, because you you took it to audio and then to put onto iTunes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I but I'll probably. I'll probably go through and do it. I don't know anything about getting stuff up on iTunes, but it uh, doesn't look like it's too too big a bitch. No, and there's like probably 60 YouTube videos showing you how. It's, it's, not, it's not hard. Yeah, so coming soon. I don't know how many people are going to want to <laughs> listen to me pounding beers on the way to work, but uh, I'll find out. It's, I, like, I like this podcast. It's just relaxed, easygoing. I mean, for a guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't do any preparation <laughs> either. So. <laughs> it's like we could talk about Back to the Future a bit. Done. That's enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only thing I do is I have to go try and find the the beer or whatever, but that's not exactly work for me. So. So you have like a big beer store nearby, or? Yeah, we've got a couple. I live in a pretty populated area, but there's one that is huge. I mean, I can get anything there, and if I have enough time, they'll even order if they don't have it. So. Wow. Okay, I could be chosen something obscure because you were saying about the craft beers. I was at a friend of mine's house the other day, and he was like, "Yeah, I've got this like special beer from this brewery." I was like, "Man, this is really good." And so we're drinking this. And I'm like, "I didn't have dinner or anything." I'm like, "Man, I'm feeling pretty pretty drunk for a couple of beers." And he's like, "Oh, this is nine percent." I'm like, "Ah, oh, that's oh. probably why." 
Yeah, I've had that happen to me before, too. Back before I knew what imperial meant, like if you get an imperial stout, I didn't know that meant it was really high alcohol. Oh, I didn't even know that today. Yeah, if you see something that says imperial, it's going to kick your ass. So, I was drinking some of those with my friend. I had three. I'm like, man, I am hammered. What is, what is happening? <laughs> Did I not eat today? Why is... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I had learned that the hard way. A uh, couple, couple hangovers I wasn't intending from the... Good old Imperials. I gotta work tomorrow, Jesus. <laughs> uh, so you were talking about the four-hour work week. Now that you've kind of got this thing down, are you busting your ass like you have to when you do a regular startup, or have you been able to kind of pull back a little bit? I I definitely don't. You know, there's a there's a startup seems to mean it's not really what I'm doing. Like, the startup always seems like venture capital, hire as many employees as you can, all of this stuff. I'm like, I don't want venture capital. I don't really want employees. I would rather just... I like, do you know the term lifestyle business? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm more into this, where it's kind of like do something that allows me to do what I want. I, you, you pretty much probably you've said the same thing. It's like, I just want to do something like that I can experiment, that I can try new things, that if I want to do a podcast about something, I can do that. It's just kind of freedom. But, yeah, I, I bust my ass a bit, I guess. Like, I, I I started a bunch of stuff, and so now it's like I feel like I'm juggling, like, three or four major projects, and that can be tough, but it's all enjoyable. Like, if I didn't enjoy it, I would just stop doing one or two of them and just focus on one thing. But, yeah, I've also not been doing it very long. I think it was, like, maybe... 18 months since I, since I kind of stopped freelancing and started taking doing my own stuff seriously. And, yeah, that's been, like, a good a good amount of time to bust my ass for, but I probably couldn't do it for the next five years. But So at some point, I need to settle on what I actually want to do. Oh, yeah. sure. I was just or curious just, because, yeah, startup, I don't know if that's the right term or not, but basically starting your own business, the first two years are brutal. Just yeah. Tons it's, of work. So I was just curious if you'd hit that point yet where you could start to throttle back. I finally hit it maybe November-ish, and I've been coasting too long now. <laughs> I need to put the pedal down a little more, but it's the first two years are a bitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you've been through this as well. No, I'm still in the first two years, and I can, I, I can see, like, by the end of this year, which will be the kind of two-year mark, it's, you know, I, sh I should be pretty safe and secure and be like, no, I could ease off a little, but as you know, I'm pretty... I'd probably keep the throttle going for maybe a little bit longer, but I will maybe take like a month and try something else or something. Just Sure. Yeah, I don't know. The difficult part becomes once it starts working and you see you're actually making money, you can see you can make real money. Well, this is the thing. This No, this is probably where I am. And I'm like, okay... Some of this is really working pretty good. And then it's like, well, I should make it work really good. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah, that's kind of the phase I'm in now, but I was I was starting to reach burnout, so I had to pull back on some things I was doing. But, yeah, it's once you hit that point, it's nice. <laughs> I, got a, I got about a year in, actually, and I mean, I've been working like 12, 13 hours a day pretty straight, and then I, was, then I just had this month where I was like, I just don't want to work. I just don't want to do it. And yep. then so basically I just, I ended up listening to a ton of audiobooks, kind of just keeping everything going. And then it was about three weeks. And then I was like, it's really amazing. Like that kind of rest, you know, I thought I'm done. I just can't do this anymore. This is not for me. I, I need to rethink things. And then I was like, so I was thinking about things and then I felt fine just going back to it. Just kind of took three weeks of it easy. And it's like, yeah, let's get back to it. Yep. That's exactly what I went through. I would sit down to write and I just, I can't, I can't write today. And then it, it stretched and it stretched and uh, I finally broke it. But it was, it's a bitch. It doesn't help too when you're working by yourself at the house. Um, it does something weird to you. I don't know. It's hard to describe to people. Cabin fever. Yeah, a little bit. Cabin yeah. fever is how, how I describe, how, how, how I've had it described to me. Yeah, what I'm not going to go on Jack Nicholson, but. Uh, <laughs> but there's that, there's that level of like. It's not so, like, when was the last time I left the house? Because the, the delivery comes and delivers my food, and I didn't run, like, for a few days. Like, I jog a lot, and 
It's like, did they leave the house in 48 hours? No. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I got you beat on that one. One time I went outside to take the garbage out, and I'm looking around, and I realize I have not been outside for 11 days. <laughs> Dude, that is insane. <laughs> so I have to force myself to go out and do things, otherwise I'll just sit in here and work. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm the same. And it'll be like, and then my girlfriend will get back from work, and I'll just be like, she'll be like, did you leave the house today? No. <laughs> exactly. Leave the house tomorrow. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't help. We're like, getting rid of my car, so, and there's not a whole lot within walking distance of me, so God only knows what's going to happen then. I don't, I don't have a car. I <laughs> but you live in a city, right? I do live in a city, yeah. There's a, there's a tram stop outside. Yeah, I, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you getting rid of the car? Um, I don't use it enough. It's just another one of those things. Why am I spending money on insurance and you know, maintenance if I drive it once every two weeks? So, yeah. Go on. Yeah. I can buy more beer that way. Cars are expensive. Cars are expensive. I was looking at getting one just for, I don't know, the summers are really nice here, and I was like, oh, for like 2000 bucks, I could buy like a cheap convertible. That would be really cool. But then I look at like, because I live in a city, so you've got to buy parking, so you've got to go rent a parking space and everything, and, and that adds to your bills and insurance and tax and all of that stuff. Yeah, it really adds up. I mean, my car's been really paid off for, up. I don't know, five or six years now, but... But that's, still... not, the, that's not the expense. There's no, it's petrol. really not. So... Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of it, and then it's more of an excuse to sit around and, <laughs> you know, do nothing. <laughs> well, without, without the car, you never have to think about whether you have to drive. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah. When, when you have a car, you're like, someone's like, come to the pub, and it's like, oh, no, it's really far away, so I can't make it. Or like, so, or, you know, you won't, you either won't go or you'll drive, and then it's like, oh, well, I can't drink because I'm driving. But when you don't have a car. Not a concern anymore. anymore. Oh, Actually, so, have you used the Uber app? Oh, yeah, they have it here. It's, it's so cheap and awesome. Yeah, they have a few drivers by me now, so I saw that. And, okay, I don't need a car anymore. <laughs> yeah. If I want to go somewhere, I'll just call those guys. So how far do you live away from somewhere? Well, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm in the middle of nowhere. Um, I live 20 minutes outside of Baltimore, uh, which is a fairly big city. And then... Baltimore. <laughs> what's that? I've heard of Baltimore. Yeah, country. yeah. It's yeah. a couple hundred thousand people. It's not huge, but, you know, it's pretty big. Um, and then I'm about five minutes outside of a smaller city that's about 30,000 people. Um, okay. Like, I can walk and get... I have a beer distributor right by my house, which, you know, really helps me. Like, I can walk and get food. <laughs> yeah, I can walk and get food and stuff like that, but to actually go out to a bar or a nice restaurant, I have to drive. Uh, not really a lot of public transportation here, so. Yeah. In fact, five minutes before this call, I was in a restaurant. <laughs> it was like, there's this, I just moved in this, like, this pub restaurant right nearby, and so I was eating my food meal, and I was like, shut up, this call, like, dash home. And you just walked home? home? Yeah, I slightly jogged, because I was running a little bit late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, having a pub by me might be dangerous. Yeah, it's, um, and this is the thing in the city. There's always somewhere to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which well, is uh, like, I'm like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I was just gonna say it's like it's there's also coffee shops, so you can kind of go out and I, I usually like when I've got a bit too much cabin fever these days, like I'll I'll take my laptop and go outside and find someone at work that is not, you know, um, my desk at home in my apartment. <laughs> sure. I'm actually glad now that spring's here I can go outside and do some writing just to breathe air that's not been recycled through my house. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah, so. Outside with us. I think we're close to an hour. I didn't actually look at what time it was when we started. Uh, and I know it's getting a little later there for you and you've been drinking for a while, so I'll let you go here. Uh, I'm, I'm well more. away from early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still have... It's 3 o'clock here. <laughs> it's 20 past, 20 past 9, yeah. Uh, give everyone your social media stuff, website, all that information. Um, you can check out the podcast every Thursday on iTunes. Just search Rocking Self-Publishing. 
rockandselfpublishing.com is the website. Uh, RSPcast is the Twitter handle. Um, not really doing much on Facebook, but if you send me a message, I'll get it. But best to email me, Simon at rockingselfpublishing.com. Are you actively pushing the writer's forum you started? Yeah. Um, if you're interested, if it's, it's for people, as you know, a bit further along on the self-pub journey. But um, if you think that could be for you, just go to the website. There's a big banner in the right-hand side. You can't miss it. Just click on that and see what it's about. Cool. Sounds good. I appreciate you coming on, man. It's been fun. And... Uh... I had no idea this is where the Pilsner came from. Yeah, the original Pilsner there. Does it, even, it must say it on the label. Should be the label. It does, the original Pilsner. Oh, shit. Yeah, the original Pilsner. Yeah. yeah. I don't even read what I drink. I just... <laughs> this has alcohol in it, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> and the way I've been talking, I must sound like the biggest drunk of all time. <laughs> like Charlie just, Sheen over here. Just self-employed. Just self-employed. Yeah. Yeah. It is fun, so... All right, man, I appreciate it, and I'll put the link to all your stuff in the in the show notes and put a link to the podcast I did with you that was I believe a good time <laughs> from what I think yeah. I remember. Well you were sick apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should come back on sometime. We could uh, catch up and uh, you know see what you've been up to and all that. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm way beyond where I was when I was on the first time, so we could talk yeah, about it. You, you were doing well. I think you were talking about kind of you'd quit your job and were making things work. So uh, it had just started to work then, so now I'm just Netflix and Beer Street. So, well, I'm in late. Well, let's reconnect in a couple of weeks. I'm off to the London Book Fair next week, but um, or like in two weeks. But I'll drop you an email and we'll set something up. Sounds good. And make sure you give L some kind of shit for me. I don't care what right. it is. Just <laughs> give herself. <laughs> just, just something. Anything. I don't care what you say. I'll own it. That's fine. All right. All right. But I appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers, man. Bye.